that they find it very scary to develop an OSS. But is it an OSS thing, specifically? Apparently not. So this is a st stack of a message. Uh, basically, there was a question. For people who can read it in the back, it's basically titled, Scared to Ask Questions Here. It's stack out it makes sense. Uh, I'm a computer science student using stack out for a while in the research. He is scared to ask questions. Okay. Um, so, this is an audience thingy. I have chocolates in my bag. Now, as a disclaimer says on top, that chocolate doesn't represent the actual chocolate. It might be smaller. But, <laughs> uh, but can someone guess what is the next slide? Huh? Okay, well, this word will not burn. Okay, then this is Sometimes it's hard. 
for the maintenance of it. Okay. So I gave a CFA for this talk basically like two two weeks back, I think so. And as I was thinking about what to write, because of the life of a maintainer, just last week I have some I have some experiences from last week to share with you guys, right? In Hopkins, basically. So we are a sort of a big project, but we usually don't get too many outside contributors. We get like a lot of feature requests and a couple of people who perform um, um, like one of bug fixes or small feature additions or something. But I, I don't know what happens if we had a relay on April. And after that, every week is basically this. I have been revealing like this two days ago, this was 26 PRs. Just now I closed one PR. So it's now at 19, but this is just before that. So there are like 20 PRs. Now there are 19 PRs open. And I had to go through this and review them. And the thing is, when I'm reviewing, the people are looking into me reviewing. Right? So when I review, I had to actually click. Like, if I accept it, I had to give it like, I had to make sure that this is vetted because a lot of users are using it and there's a bug, it's a problem. Now, if I reject it, if I don't give a valid reasoning, then I will be in hack and business Not a good thing. Right? So, we get cool PRs, right? There are the really interesting, amazing PRs. I got into this position because I used to give a lot of amazing PRs. self <laughs> We get crappy PRs as well. Now, I do want everyone to notice the color we use there, but I'm not getting deep into this. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and we can grab a PR as well. So this PR actually came last week. Fixed typos, right? And the, the description is this: this PR fixes typos in one file. Okay. There are typos in a lot of places in the world that happens. This is in one file. Now I thought, okay, this is a very really easy enough task. I was like, okay, eventually I will review this the low priority thing, but I will review. Apparently there are mistakes on the typo corrections. <laughs> right? <laughs> so um, we had basically this and to give back in to be honest, if the person ever sees this talk, bro, if you're doing a typo correction, please make sure that your typos don't have typos. Type of corrections don't have like this thing. Yeah. And they are needed to be corrected. Right? Um, so yeah, I had to go through that and revert this thing, and that is time I'm not spending on the other PRs, which are more, more important. So I was like, with this fix box thing, I was like, did hack the book SRI already on you? Right? Um, during, uh, so during the hospitals, like, we had a like our like really into the prime time. We had like during 2020, we, during Hackathon Fest, we had about 100 or so PRs merged in that month, right? And it was it's, there was a lot of talks thing, and a lot of people ported, uh, ported. I mean not ported, introduced IAT in languages basically for of course for different languages. Um, um, and but what tends to happen basically is there was this incident which happened in Hacker Office 2020, I think so. Yeah, 2020, I think so. Where this one YouTuber guy, um, yeah, I got it. Basically, he was like, You can go everywhere and just do this. Right? <laughs> That's amazing project over there. You gotta put the space in between. Yeah. That is another PR. Yeah. So when you have to think in the hustle function, basically. So that's another PR. You can send a type of PR now. You need to get four PRs, right? Yeah, yeah, you gotta get four PRs. This is two. Yeah. Do that in two more, one more project and you're And I see apparently like these people are thinking even about something. So that is what I'm on the spectrum. But that is also pretty interesting because Basically what happened is everyone was mimicking him in the video and people, everyone started making videos. Some made you even the same repository as him. Okay? So it was super funny, and, but it was also super interesting because this is happening throughout people. And being a maintainer is not an easy task, especially of a popular project. We have 
like we have a lot of scrutiny behind this because a lot of people are seeing what you are doing and it gets like creepy. So this is one end of the spectrum. Now the other end of the spectrum is more terrifying. Now that also happened this week. Okay. So we received this amazing gift. So in April, Housework we basically introduced a thing called self-hosted. Then before we were partially self-hosted, but we had some parts which were not. But uh, on uh, uh, on the April release, we actually allowed Housework to be fully self-hosted. And just I, just to understand the craziness of this, just look at the issue number of issues that it is closing, which is not here. When I was looking at my phone, the, usually the clauses is usually like one or two. It was like overlapping into the next lines. Right? Now, this guy basically revamped a lot of aspects of it. Now, the thing is, the guy, I'm pretty sure he's like a 10x guy. Uh, but what he did is had a lot of cool aspects of it. But a lot of it is against what we are planning at headquarters. Now, the problem is, again, I had to sort through this. So this is the opening comment, by the way. I'm just going to let it see. Okay. That is the same. That is something you should do. But the problem is you are doing so many stuff in a PR, you are basically revamping HubSpot's entire self-hosting stuff. Right? And, and the cherry on top was the dude. Now there was like a little bit of miscommunication going on here and there. And his PR is one of the 20 or so PRs I had to review. Right? So there are other PRs, some are bugs, some are problems which need to be solved. And so when I actually spend time to actually review these things, um, I have to actually do like a cost analysis basically. Will uh, uh, and basically try to tackle these PRs and then eventually eventually think. The bro was like, <laughs> right? This is a, this is about the time when the anti copy meme basically got peaked. Uh, yeah, memes get peaked in like a. Yeah, so I was like, ET, 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 and I started seeing this meme together, and it was like together horrendous. So it was a horrible experience because now I have pressure from like that versus pressure from that guy's side to actually review this thing. Meanwhile, other PRs which are more important are also there. And I had to eventually give an answer and give a rejection. And to do that, I had to prepare a statement. Like, because he changed a lot of things, and a lot of things are smart. A right? lot of things we can't accept, not because it is it doesn't work, uh, but it is something which will be refactored later on or something like that because there is a pipeline for it. And Housecoach is also from our side, we have some internal plans for other things because we are also a product, uh, because we are a company. So we have some other stuff as well. I had to put all of these things in a politically correct way, which is the more difficult aspect of it. So, so from this thing, I started realizing. So it's open to scary, right? What do you guys think from what I have said so far? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it can. Uh, mostly because people are looking at you, right? Uh, heck no, right? Especially for confidence. Like for maintainers, we sign up for this thing. This is something every maintainer should acknowledge that you are getting into this thing and you might get roasted publicly. If Linus gets roasted, you are also only going to get roasted. So uh, just be mindful. Um, if you are a contributor, I would suggest like talk to the maintainers before you do anything drastic. If the guy talked with us, so the thing is, he basically solves these issues and says, I'm going to tackle this, and he submits this PR. 
right? In uh, in our project, we get a lot of issues, a lot of comments basically going in. So his that comment basically slipped up. And then what you're seeing is this here. If we actually talk to the competitor, talk to the maintainers, we are, for example, in Hopscotch case, we are available in the Hopscotch Discord and also we have a Telegram group. Uh, if you join there and talk out to the uh, maintainers, you can actually talk in a way where we both can actually benefit from this. Right? Because the matter of fact is project has, projects have directions. And for a contributor, especially if you are not familiar with the direction the project is going, or if the project doesn't, for example, Hopscotch doesn't have a public roadmap at the moment. Um, so um, if you actually talk to the uh, talk to the maintainers and the people working on the project, uh, it'll actually be really cool so that we can actually reduce this uh, back and forth and basically this entire subject. Right? And on the other side, the offices are also good. Um, uh, like, don't do type what the typo guy did, right? Uh, there are a couple of interesting projects which are happening, like one set of, so the set of projects which are there is this one dude uh, who is like building some sort of like a board sort of a thing where um, it'll actually go through like different uh, different files of the project and basically look for typographical things. It does really good and uh, before the PRs are filed, the person is actually managing and reviewing it. So the, the scope of changes he does is actually really big and because of that it is actually making the sizable changes in the documentation. So that, that, those sort of fixes are pretty cool. Um, at least if you are doing a typo, um, if you are doing a typo fix PR, please make sure there is no typos in the typo fix PR. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, if you think doc fixes are not cool, I started my OSS contributions uh, with create AI tab and button up. I don't know, this is two random set of projects, but that was me. Um, I was working, I was helping with them some config files. I think uh, uh, in Create React app, there was like a bug, I think, which was, which was fixed if I add some files to Git ignore. And front of Amazon also, it was something like the config, it was wrong. Um, but I was like, they working and if I got it, not going to be out of So uh, I want to actually emphasize that fact. Uh, there was, I think that connection happened around in 2015. My memory might be failing me. But imagine if the 2015 angle was not contributing and was not part of the OSS thing. Um, I wouldn't be here, I would be talking to you guys. Um, you know, Hopscotch would have this amazing CPU. That's correct. And I, and, uh, but on the other hand, there are also cases where maintainers are always not trying either. And this is where some interesting hot conversations are going to happen. So, one case study I have is about Elm. How many of you here are familiar with Elm? Okay, there's a couple of you. Uh, mostly maybe like people who are interested in like functional programming or like front and stuff. So, Elm is a pretty good language, it's a pretty simple concept. Think of it like uh, uh, the way I describe it about technical folks is basically it's think of it as like if there was what if there was an ML language just for and L is really cool. I have tried L. I, I wasn't able to use it in a sort of like a bigger project since. But the, its main beauty is that you can make a refactor and then it, it will basically just spit out compiler errors. You correct the compiler errors down and, uh, and you will basically have a functioning app. Right? It's like if you are actually doing something, you have to actually handle the error case as well. So much so that for Apps which are usually deployed on L, it, the L part of it usually doesn't crash. Right? Companies, uh, like I've seen, premier companies like Norading um, who are adopt L because they have a very weird dictator thing, which they're getting into. Um, like they said, when they put a React front end to L, um, they reduced basically their uh, error rate to almost zero percent. Now on the front end, I don't know about the other 10x front end developers here. Hopscotch doesn't have a zero percent error rate, and I don't think I can get it to that point. So in Elm's case, what was the problem? So it was an amazing language, and a lot of things were happening there for a while. And then what happened was suddenly the last release was in um, October 2019. Now I don't know in the web development side, I don't know about others, but in the web development side of things, 
2019 is a year we, we don't even recognize anymore. Right? I'm pretty sure that there's like 15 new frameworks uh, which came after 2019. I mean, React even, with the whole new next, uh, the whole new next React server components thing, you don't even react, uh, right? React the same way anymore. Right? That's how fundamentally that changes. But I think it still basically stays the same. Right? And the main thing with that is even as a creator, even I can't pronounce his last name person. Uh, he basically think according to him, Elm is good where it is, and it doesn't need to be updated. Right? Now that was an interesting thing because in the JavaScript world, it's like there's no version, there's no bump in the uh, there's no update in the last couple months. It's dead. The project is done. Right? So it, it was really interesting basically that approach. Now what happened was that the community actually started looking into it and um, Elm is not perfect. There are problems with the compiler, there are bugs around the language which can hit a lot of people. But turns out what happened was the project continued and Ivan was basically still the one be calling all the calls. Right? Like if something gets added to Elm, Ivan has to manually upload it. The problem is he doesn't represent everyone in the community. He has a very hardline view of things. And turns out, whatever features he wants, he adds it well. But the problem is, when his, his usage doesn't align with the community, that he doesn't get added to well. And this actually started creating problems with that option. And a lot of big companies were using it when they started to move out of Elm's sadly. It is a project, even I love and I don't exactly what to see there, but it's there are like plans to fork it, there are plans which are happening around nothing very concrete. Which is another aspect of it. But like when you add community and when you actually add users, it's like suffering from success. Where now you have this project and now people are using it. And now you can't exactly say what what does the project need. You have to actually listen to the community and understand what needs to be done. A very good example for this was the whole set of issues with the Home Assistant, basic, Home Assistant Nix uh, clash basically. So for the people who are not familiar with Nix, so Nix basically was, I'm not very, I'm not very into that immutable world either, but I guess Nix is a uh, Linux distro where you basically have this config file, you just update, you, you just write the config file how you want and you get the same Nix build and it will basically create that operating system for you and if you use the same config file, you get basically the same results. If you want to deploy a set of things, it's very easy to do in Nix. And the whole thing is it is based on the concept of being immutable, um, which the Linux gurus here can actually go deep, dive, you can dive deep into it with them. But um, there was a problem. So with the immutability, one of the things is uh, the Nix, with, with the Nix structures, packages should stay relevantly uh, immutable, which means they can't later on add stuff into the file system or do weird things, basically. Yeah? Yeah, it is deterministic. It should be deterministic, basically. And uh, that created a problem. So the, the well, basically the Nix community added the, the package into the repositories and the problem what happened was the creator of Home Assistant had a problem with that because it doesn't align with the Home Assistant's development philosophy. But this is a very weird thing, right? Um, I don't know, has an occurrence of this happened before? Yeah, I mean, that didn't happen at the end of the day because this and hacker news was basically for say for question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. There was also another thing. But this was the thing. And he eventually basically gave a reason for it. And it was a long thing. But at the end of the day, his concerns are also pretty true. Basically, Home Assistant and Next doesn't exactly mix together with that way the code is right. And he is like if basically people start using Home Assistant with Nix and expect that to be a thing, when there is a problem with Home Assistant, people will be reaching out to 
homocysteine rather than X, right? And the clear separation of boundary is not being enforced here. And that was basically the problem with this. It is because basically people depend on this configuration. We can't exist. You are like from the author side, uh, from the uh, distribution side, they can't exactly just remove it out. From the author side, it is not something he wants to uh, basically implement and support. It makes sense. From my perspective, if you ask me if I'm taking for taking 10 years, I do understand that if you don't want to support it, it makes sense. But people depend on this and that makes things more complicated. Right? And basically this was the um, response from the next community team. And the community consensus is they will keep the packages around. So basically they honored the author's wishes. And it's still there. I am not very familiar with it. So it's still there, right? Yeah. Uh, it's still there in the mix. Right? But it's against all these things. Which is very weird. Uh, and the community side of things is basically the community basically takes responsibility for anything related to its form system. Basically. We'll see how this plays out as the years go back. So there a new kind of a dilemma basically is what are the authors and rights of this project? Once it's open source, right? Now I don't know about you guys. I hate decisions. Now I don't know why I'm in the CTO position if I hate decisions, but because my job is definitely to take decisions. But I generally hate taking decisions, right? And this is basically what it's evolving down into. Like there are a lot, and that is kind of like the point of this talk. Now I know I'm basically going all over the place, but. One of the things I've noticed in our community is we don't exactly have a recurring talk about these sort of problems actually happening within the fourth ecosystem. And there are a lot of interesting questions where we haven't had proper answers to. Right? And my goal with this is basically to start, start that. Right? It is not for anyone to learn anything, and I hope no one has learned anything. And but the main goal is basically we should start talking about not just the happy part of post, not just you know how to sell post X Y Z, but also to talk about the problems we face in the post community and the dilemmas which we face and how different people tackle. Right? Because without communication, there's nothing much going on. Now the thing is, I don't remember this the person selling the Google search this and on the spot. So um, yeah. This basically sums it up. If there is no communication, if we actually don't talk amongst ourselves, talk through maintainers, talk through contributors, and not just have flame wars which are all about happy things, we are not going to actually find a solution to these kinds of questions. Right? So that's what my talk is basically about. And if anyone has any questions, I am not most probably going to be answering them, but does anyone have a question? Don't ask anything to be still philosophical yeah, or yes. political. Yes. Can I ask a personal question? So, yes. how do you handle all these situations on your own? Like, do you have any routine or something like that? So that like you remain sane and. Um, so, first of all, that is based on the assumption that I remain sane. Uh, <laughs> it is not a CTO. <laughs> right? I have, like, the OSS part of Housewatch is something, like, I have, like, a final say on things, but um, it's not just me anymore. I have to talk with a lot of people and figure it out. But one of the things, again, I want to bring back is even when all of these problems are there, there are people in this community who will actively actually discuss about these questions. It's just, it usually doesn't happen over conference talks or something. It usually happens over these small threads and discussions which basically go on amongst ourselves. Right? Uh, within, the, within the audience itself, I usually talk to Subin or Abraham in the back uh, about stuff basically regarding things which happen because like when I have a doubt or something um, about how to handle this because they kind of, like especially Subin is very knowledgeable about all the work. Right. Uh, so, uh, when I talk to him, he usually uses it. Again, all of these things are actually something like Yeah, so, um, so, that's the other thing on the, uh, the other side of the coin. You can actually talk to people in the OSS community and they can share their experiences. And a lot of it is basically you have to discover what goes on because every community is different. But um, 
the ability for us to like operate and talk about these terms is also like a part of the postulates. Oxford for private <coughs> to avoid all these things. Would you do it? No. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Because then there is like the whole point of Oxford is basically it is rooted in the OSS community. So we are not planning to make it basically proprietary. Oh, no. You want me to pull a red hat? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so they asked me this actual question, which is basic. I actually saw a couple of repos with that, where it's like, there is code, you can see my code, you can't complain about it. Yes. Or you, can, you cannot fix things about it. But that is again some possible. But you can have a parallel kind of place where... You can have a call. No, not a call. Okay. A parallel place where users can complain. But the main repo will remain to your quality. Okay, so that, that is a very really GitHub sort of a thing. Like if you are if you are hosting things on GitHub, then uh, that's the thing. But like for example, it does Linux use issues, no, it will mainly just yeah, yeah. yeah that, for that it fits there, it depends on the project. I mean like you are you're, you're a team monitor that is <coughs> yeah. on GitHub, right? Yeah. So you don't have a separate board or anything. So for our internal team, yes. Uh, that's like editor and stuff. But uh, most of the stuff we do are in public. So unless it's like something which is of, which is more of a proprietary or something which you are working on for the future. So those things have their own like private places. But um, like closing out your main issue code or something, that's not a, not something I'm like a fan of. Issues are good. Can I ask one more question? Like yes. how do you in Fox Watch like close issues like issues? How do you deal with issues and how do you deal with closing those things? What is your procedure on how do you deal with it? How do I how do I Deal with it. Yeah. It depends on it, it, every issue, every product request requires like its own set of like questions. Like a, see, the interesting thing is like a couple of people. Um, like I try. First thing is be nice. Second thing is try not to be in hacker news. And the uh, other, yeah, try to try not to be in hacker news. So basically, try to be constructive about your criticisms, basically. And um, so I have seen a couple of people where they have an idea, but it is not maybe fully thought. Like there are some things uh, from my side, for example, like someone created it, but I every day my job is basically to think about how much and things and stuff. So some of the things the community raises are something I have already thought about and have an answer to. Right now the question is how will I actually tell that to people? So, um, because this is more going to be a public facing thing, uh, I had to basically come up with a nice way to tell this person that this is not going to work. Right? What's the How long do you take to respond to issues of the It depends. This, uh, like the, the, the other adults right in that long ass PR thing, uh, I had to take it like two weeks or so to basically prepare the statement. Because I had to actually try out this code, see all of the different aspects of it, what he was trying to get, the, uh, get into. Or while the only communication thing I have is, is basically this guy's code. So I have to understand what is going through in his mind, try to relate with him, okay, what is the problem here. Because in most of the cases on false side, uh, except maybe the whole hack of this type person, is basically generally people do open PRs in like good spirit. It's just they might not understand the thing. I wouldn't say misguided is the right word. Uh, they might be not sure about the different aspects of it. So, um, my goal will be basically, okay, this is my direction of thinking, and we don't exactly align on this, that is the problem. But the problem is bringing that as a good statement. Like, I can, I have two options. One is basically, I can just say, no, we are not going to take this, there are problems with it, and go, but I can give like all information, uh, information. That takes time, that is an effort, but I think it pays off. It is something like, it, it is like the superhero story, it's basically something we eventually call it. No, a lot of people know, the thing you have to know is that if, if you are already feeling depressed slash uh, <laughs> unstable in general, I would suggest not go for maintainership. <laughs> you will see, it, it has its highs and its lows. And the lows are horrible and the highs are also pretty nice. 
Like during my tenancy or of course basically we have seen a lot of members of the community from like different divisions uh, be able to I mean, like one of my fondest memories is basically uh, I and Diaz were once we saw this issue at the PR basically we were crying was basically like uh, Hopscotch kind of supports accessibility as much as we can not a prime focus but just that we did and we were only told in the market which actually did that so people who were blind or had difficulties in vision the only tool they could use was Hopscotch and they had to come together uh, they had to come together and actually collaborate and actually fix and improve the thing together so that is like an amazing site you can see and there are a lot of amazing things like this you can see in the community as well but it's usually the lowest of the Yeah, so yeah, that's about it, I guess. They will come with some marketing.